Be prepared to expand your wish list because in today's video we're looking at trending plants across the world and I'm going to give them a rating. Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now to discuss houseplant trends you kind of need to be across the trends which I have to admit I totally am not. First of all I live in Australia. We're like this ginormous island in the middle of nowhere. We have really strict biosecurity laws so we are very very limited in what we can import into the country. So as a result of it I feel like we're dealing with a very limited gene pool over here in Australia. So purely based on my location I feel like I'm missing out on a couple of trends but also I'm kind of in this state of my collecting journey where I have so many plants already I'm not really actively looking at adding that many plants to my collection so my wish list is very limited and I think it's quite humble like a like a philodendron Amazon sunset it's actually quite readily available overseas we just don't have it in the country and so on but I remember a few years ago when I first started my hobby, I was very much kind of just chasing the new plant releases, looking at what plants are coming out of tissue culture, which plants are newly available in the country. And I would try my very best to secure some of them. And the other day I was talking about how my plant goals have kind of changed throughout the year and it kind of got me a little nostalgic and I was thinking, ah, it would actually be fun to kind of do a bit of research into what plants are currently trending and if I wouldn't have an established collection already, what sort of plants would I actually be getting these days? So I did some research and by research I mean I posted on my Instagram stories and I basically asked you to send through what plants are currently trending where you live or what's currently on your wish list. So today we're really getting a very broad worldwide view of what plants are currently trending, what are people adding to their wish lists, what are people adding to their collection, what is kind of like the new it plant. And I got so many responses that we can react to today. And I want to give each plant a rating. Uh, actually, I want to give each plant two ratings. I want to rate it based on aesthetics and I also want to rate it based on my perceived ease of growing or whether or not that's something that I actually think would suit me as a grower, my conditions and kind of like my existing collection. Would I actually add it to the collection? So on aesthetics, we're going to rank them out of five pot plants, one being the lowest, five being the highest. And for the perceived ease of care, I'm going to rank them out of good noodle stars. <laughs> Shout out to all of my SpongeBob fans. <laughs> but we're going to give them stars, one star being um, no, <laughs> that's a hard no for me. Uh, five stars being absolutely, I would love to have this plant in my collection. Now I'm trying my very best to not let pricing factor into my decision because plant pricing is first of all really subject to you as a grower. Like some people are willing to spend money on it, some people aren't. Some people get a plant knowing that will they will propagate it and sell it on and potentially even make a profit out of it. So a price tag isn't a big, a big issue for you. Some people don't want to spend money on plants and at the end of the day that's a decision everybody has to make for themselves. But also plant prices are wildly different across the world. So something that is, for example, an Amazon Sunset. I was in Miami just a month ago and they had Amazon Sunset cuttings for 30 bucks. Over here in Australia, again, to my knowledge, they're not available, but I know for certain that once somebody gets a hand on one of them, they'll probably sell for $13,000. So, you know, I'm trying to be price agnostic over here, but um, see how I go. Oh, and of course, before we get started, a little disclaimer because I can already see the comment section lighting up. This is just my opinion, guys. You know, it's just my aesthetic preference uh, and my experiences as a grower, which could be completely different to your aesthetic preferences and your experiences. So you do you, I do me, but this is my channel. So obviously I can only talk about my opinion and my experiences, but please don't feel discouraged if I don't like the plant that you like. That's one of the beautiful things about this hobby. There are so many different plants and plants are so varied. So no matter what your taste is, we probably gonna find something for everybody. All right, first one, and you know what? I'm just gonna Google these and we're just gonna 
purely based on Google Images, which I know is not necessarily like the most reliable source of all times, but mm, better than nothing, right? First one, Philodendron Radiatum Variegata. Alrighty. Oh, first one is from Flora Magnifica. So they are actually available in Australia. That's really good to know, but um, Oh, I said I'm going to be price agnostic. The first thing I see is an $800 price tag. I think the most I've ever spent on a plant, and that was very early on in my journey, was 400 bucks for my queen. And nowadays you can get them for like 100 or something like that. But let's have a look at a more mature specimen. I really like this. I think this looks amazing. It's giving me thermatophyllum vibes. Um, yeah, and really nice variegation. From a looks perspective, I'll probably give it a four out of five pot plants. Let's leave a little bit of room uh, for some even better ones. And from a perceived care, or would I add this to my collection score, I would probably give it a, yeah, I would give this a five. I would totally get that. I think my only concern would be space, but I feel like this could be a plant that would even do quite okay in my garden. Alrighty, next up. We've got Anthurium vitarifolium variegata. I mean, I do have a normal vitarifolium, it's just at the top over here, so I suppose I can imagine what it would look like with variegation. Oh, uh, like mine is triple planted, so I have three heads in there. I could see how this could look really nice if it's really bushy. I have to say, it's one of these plants where, actually I'm pretty sure I saw one in Miami as well and that looked pretty good. However, especially in this image over here, I feel like it's almost like the variegation is making these leaves a little deformed, which I see quite frequently with variegated plants. So on that note, I would probably give it a 3 out of 5 for aesthetics. And given that the green version is very easy to grow, I would probably give it, I would probably give it a three out of five for perceived ease of care. Because I think the green version is pretty easy to care for, but I would probably actually prefer the green version over the variegated one. Next up, we've got Anthurium Magnificum crossed with Regal. And they actually sent through a photo, didn't they? So I don't need to Google. I suppose, you know, uh, Magnificum crossed with Regal in general is a pretty, like there could be lots of different hybrids made by different people. Um, I like this. Let's, so let's just judge it based on this photo that was submitted. I like this. I love when an anthurium comes out and has like a really nice intense red color and it looks somewhat compact. It doesn't, it looks like it doesn't spread too much. I'm not too sure if maybe the person who took the photo is managing the petioles, but, and that could be me being ignorant, I don't think it looks that different to a lot of other anthuriums I have seen. So I like the look of it. I think it looks beautiful. I would probably give it four out of five from a, I'll probably give it four out of five from look for looks because it has nice color, it has velvet texture, it has veining. So all of the features that I always like and um, kind of perceived ease of care or like maybe that's the wrong name for the category. It's more like would I actually get it? I would probably give this a two out of five. I would get it if it's right in front of me at a really, really uh, inexpensive price, but I wouldn't go out of my way to try and get this one because I don't think it would really add something to my collection that I don't already have. Anthurium SP North DF. Did I, like, are we supposed to go to university to understand Anthurium names? I know the SP stands for species. I don't know. Um, but at least when I Google it, it looks pretty consistent. Dubbing it the Holy Grail is entirely subjective. Precisely. Oh, okay. SP is species, NOF is Nova. It's uh, Latin for new species. And then the DF, I don't know what the DF stands for. Oh, Dewey Fisk, a well-known plantsman and amateur aeroid specialist who passed away in 2019. Oh, that's sad. 
All right, okay, at least we solved the mystery behind the name. Now we can look at the plant for what it is. Now I love the velvet and I love the darkness. I think those are really stunning features, but I really don't like the shape. I don't really like the elongated lobes, um, like that white sinus and then the lobes. And I specifically don't like this folding in part over here. It just looks like it's kind of not healthy. Um, in my humble opinion. But if I look at photos, they all look like that. You know what I mean? They look like they either just haven't fully unfurled or they're really dehydrated. So, mm, it's a tricky one because I do love the veining, the texture, and I love the color, but I just don't really like the shape. So, and oh my God, look at this one. I mean, these ones were like perfectly taken photos and that's probably one of the really healthy specimen. So this one looks like it's just not as healthy of a specimen and straight away it looks kind of really terrible. Sorry. <laughs> so look, let's assume that we're growing all of these plants to their full potential and they're all thriving. Um, so mm, I'd say from an aesthetics, I would probably give it a three out of 10. It's not ugly, ugly, but yeah, not my cup of tea. And if I would, I, I would, I would not grow this plant. I would probably give it a, let's say like two out of five, because it also looks like it's not super easy to grow. And it looks like a plant that if not grown really, really well, it's really ugly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, I think it's a plant that you really need to grow to perfection to really get these nice features out of it. Alrighty. But we already learned something. This is actually really cool. This is something I would normally not do. Hey, you're facing away, darling. Alrighty, oh. next up we've got Monstera Devil Monster. What? Monstera Deliciosa ties latest $40,000 sport? I said I'm gonna be price agnostic, but come on, $40,000. To be honest, it looks bad. I get the appeal, people really like white and it's kind of funky that the veins are green and the leaf is white, like very different to normal veining, right? Where we normally have like the green leaf with white veining, but it doesn't look healthy. And these are perfectly grown specimen, probably from somewhere in somebody's greenhouse. Imagine you grow that in your, I mean, hopefully you don't spend $40,000 and then grow it in your living room in like 30% humidity, but. Nah, let's just judge it based on this. I think it's just really taken this variegated Monstera trend and just going a little bit too far. So look, from an aesthetics perspective, I don't think it's bad, but I don't think it's nice as like a normal variegated Deliciosa that has like, let's say half, half leaves, for example, or like a, like a half moon thing, you know, or I don't think it's as nice as a Thai constellation, which you can easily get for like 50 bucks or a hundred bucks these days. So. I think from an aesthetics perspective, I'd give it a three out of five. It's not ugly, ugly, but it's definitely looking a little bit deformed as a result of the high variegation. And would I get this plant? That's literally zero out of five, sorry. Also the price tag is just really off-putting, sorry. I said I'm gonna be agnostic to prices, but I can't if the price tag is $40,000. That's just real. That's just ridiculous. All right, and throw him Carla Blackiei. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've definitely heard of this plant before, but I can't actually picture this plant in my head when, when you say it. So that's going to be a nice one. All right. Let's go with this one. Oh, I really enjoy this. Have a look at this. So this is a photo taken from Dark Tropics somewhere. Okay, look at how many Anthurium Color Black here hybrids they are these days. And they all look really different, kind of. Should we just maybe go with the OG? <laughs> there you go, let's. Anthurium Color Black here. Yeah. Anthurium Color Black here C1X. Oh my goodness. I think I need to go to university before I can understand Anthurium names. But let's just judge it based on this photo. I really like this velvet, dark, veining, has all of the features that I really like. I think, I, I think this one deserves a 5 out of 5. 
I know I'm not really leaving room for more, but but you know, I make the scale, so who say I can expand on it if I find something nicer than this. I would give it a five out of five. It has all of the features that I really like. I think this would be an Anthurium that would grow really well for me as well. And I think it's a little darker than any Anthurium that I've got in my collection at the moment. So if it's that dark, like it appears in this photo, keep in mind photos can be very deceiving. You can edit photos and so on. But if it's actually that dark in real life, I'll probably also give this a five out of five for wanting to add it to my collection. So yeah, five out of five good noodle stars. That's a good one that I would definitely love to add to my collection. Maybe I'll put that on my wish list then, huh? This is actually quite fun so far. I don't know if you guys are enjoying it. If you are enjoying it, let me know in the comments down below. I have so many submissions, I won't be able to react to all of them today. So we could definitely do a part two if you would like. All right, Anthurium Night Dragon. Okay, uh, let's go with this one. There's not many... Um, photos, which, which makes me think it's not such a well-known hybrid. Okay, we are an indoor aeroid official. Okay. I do love that red veining. I think that's quite unique. I don't have any plants that are like that. Oh, I love that back as well and the really deep burgundy. I don't think I like it quite as much as the Carla Blackiei. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing these right, by the way, but uh, I just say it with confidence. Um, I like it, but not as much because I think, especially if you look at this video over here, it's not actually as dark as it appears in these photos, right? In the video, it looks a little bit more red. I would probably give it a four out of five for aesthetics, but I would give it a five out of five for wanting to add this to my collection because I think it's very interesting veining and something I don't have in my collection at all. And especially when it comes to Anthuriums, I think there's just so many that are so similar. So if I want to add a new Anthurium to my collection, I really wanted to have some like more unique features. So I would actually really consider this if, if of course it comes at a reasonable price and it's readily available. Would I go out of my way and spend four digits on that plant? Absolutely not. But that actually goes for all of them, even the ones that are already on my wish list. Uh, uh, we're just talking more in theory. Theory. Imagine I walk like across a plant show and somebody's like, you can pick out one Anthurium for free. If they would have this one, I would probably pick it. Yeah. Unless they have the color black here, then I would pick her. <laughs> All right, one. Well, next one, Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. And yes, there was a bunch of people that submitted that one. Um, it's obviously a really popular one. I mean, we probably all know Philodendron Spiritus Sancti by now. I have to admit, it's not like my favorite favorite. Um, I actually have one. One moment. Oh, sorry. Bread is in front of the IKEA cabinet. I can't get it out. I'll just pop in a photo. This is a plant that, yeah, it kind of, it wasn't necessarily on my wish list because in Australia it was selling for over $10,000, um, which just puts me off. But uh, it came out of tissue culture and I got them for, I think, 35 bucks each. So I got two, obviously. Um, so yeah, I fully understand why somebody would want to grow this and from an aesthetics perspective, I do love the really elongated leaves and the lobes. Is it my favorite philodendron? No. Is it nicer than like a Milano that's also nicely elongated with lobes? No. So I would probably give this a four out of five for aesthetics. It's definitely kind of my type of philodendron, right? Like, um, and would I get this? Well, I suppose I got one. So yes, five out of five for wanting to get this plant. All right, next one, Monstera Aurea. Um, I do like it. I do like it. Um, I have to say, I would probably prefer a Golden Pothos over a Monstera Aurea. Um, now, from an aesthetics perspective, I like this. I do think I like the white variegation better. I think anything yellow variegated always gives me kind of sick vibes or like, you know, yellow leaf vibes. Like it doesn't necessarily always look healthy. Of course, with a specimen like this, of course, this looks super, super healthy. So yeah, like it doesn't look sick there, but you know what I mean? I also heard that the Aurea is yellowing faster or like browning faster the variegated part it seems to be a little bit trickier um 
But yeah, from an aesthetics, let's give it a 4 out of 5. Yeah, let's give it a 4 out of 5, especially judging based on this photo. I think it's, an, it's a stunning plant. Would I get it? To be honest, I would probably give it a 2 out of 5. I think for a couple of reasons. First of all, I already have white variegated monsteras and you know, I'm not like obsessed with variegated monsteras. I know there's like a whole subculture in our plant community where people are just obsessing about variegated monsteras and all the different types. That's how we end up with devil monsters selling for $40,000. When I was in Miami, I saw so many different types of variegated monsteras with random names like fusion, blizzard, devil, eat your heart out that I'm just so unaware of. So there's like this whole subculture that are just crazy at producing new hybrids or finding new hybrids, finding new mutations. I'm not too sure how they all produce because I'm pretty sure they're all just Monstera Deliciosa in the end. If I would want a yellow variegated plant, I would just go for Pothos. Just the ease of growing that Pothos and the Pothos can still mature and can still fenestrate. Obviously not as readily as a Monstera, but I think for wanting to, if I would want to add something to my collection then I would rat much rather add a Devil's Ivy than a Monstera Aurea irrespective of the price but if we're considering the price as well which I know I said I won't I would definitely go for the Pothos so let's give it a 2 out of 5 for adding it to my collection Oh, I love this one. Somebody said a Venus flytrap. I actually really like that. It's our first non aeroid on the list and I wouldn't necessarily get a Venus flytrap, but I know that a lot of people get them because they're supposed to also help, help with bugs, but I really, really enjoy carnivorous plants these days as well. Well, I have just a whopping two of them, but I started following a few more accounts that grow more carnivorous plants and I'm really intrigued and I really want to uh, maybe get a few more. Yeah, I'm not rushing into it, right? I'm not like going out and like hunting them, but you know, every now and then when I go to a plant fair, if I see a carnivorous plant, I just pick one up. Um, and that's how I ended up with two. Like every year when I go to the plant fair, I just buy one and that keeps me happy. I don't have the need to collect them all, but it is something very different that adds a little bit of interest. From an aesthetics perspective, I would probably give it a two out of five because it's not really a plant that would aesthetically that would look aesthetically pleasing in my house. I can see it in like a terrarium or something like that, to be fair. So um, that could work and then it would probably look a bit better and more in proportion. I think in my house it would just look like a tiny little blob in the corner and it wouldn't be like, what, what is this? Um, would I add it to my collection? Three out of five. Undecided. Alrighty, next one and that has got to be the most mentioned one. I think I just quickly scrolled through all of the answers and then I just actually went with the first ones. We're going in chronological order. But um, or maybe they're the last ones actually. I don't know. Whichever order Instagram decides to display them uh, to me. Um, I think this was probably mentioned like 10, 15 times. And I'm well aware of this plant. And I have to say, I really don't like it. <laughs> We're back on this Monstera X website. That Monstera X website really loves talking about how expensive things are, right? <laughs> Oh, Varigada, Jesus. Now they end up being variegated as well. $17,000, oh my God. Easy way to make me hate this hobby, huh? Let's find like a really nice mature specimen because to be honest, I've, se I've not really seen many nice mature specimen in um, as a house plant, to be honest. Um, okay, I like this. As a mature leaf, it actually looks kind of cool. I was making a video the other day and I included my Deliciosa Brazil form in my top 10 list of plants. And because the Brazil form has a little like wider fenestrations, is a little edgier, it does remind me of the Berlamax flame. It's obviously not quite as flamey, but well, it wasn't $17,000. Mm. I don't know. I, oh, controversial opinion. I think a lot of people like this plant because it's hyped up, not because the plant is actually that nice. Uh, 
I just feel like there's nice someone stairs to grow. I'd give it a 3 out of 10 for aesthetics because it's not ugly, right? I'm not saying it's ugly, I'm just saying it's not necessarily what I would really love to grow. I would give it a 2 out of 5 for wanting to add it to my collection, but maybe I'm also being a bit hipster over here and just like wanting to go against the trend, I don't know, but I think when a plant is like super hyped up and everybody is like just raving about it, mm, that's off-putting. <laughs> so now nah, I wouldn't honestly I wouldn't I have I have a few monsteras and I'm really happy with my monstera collection I don't necessarily see the need to to add this one to my collection if I'd be at a plant fair and I see a cutting for 15 bucks I'd pick it up but I wouldn't go out of my way and I definitely would not spend more than maybe 50 bucks 50 bucks would probably be my maximum to spend on this Again, I said I'm gonna be price agnostic, but the more we're talking about it, the more I realize that, you know what, actually the price does play a role, for me at least, you know? It can be very off-putting for me if a plant is like ridiculously expensive. Next one, Alocasia Senderiana Pink Nobles. Oh my God, what a name. Okay, when we are Googling. Okay, let's go with this photo maybe. Is this ever going to get clearer or is it is that it oh we've got a whole video here uh, okay guys I can see the appear I see why people like this controversial opinion um, I don't think pink variegation is that nice I don't think I have a single pink plant in my collection or that has like pink variegation, pink anything. Do I? Bradley, do I? No. I do love red. I love like a red back or some sort of red features in a plant, but pink is not really my cup of tea. I also don't like, I also don't like yellow variegation as I mentioned earlier. So. I personally, oh my god, does it say $1,800? Sorry, I need to get stop getting distracted by prices. Um, from an aesthetics perspective, I like the shape. Um, if it was white variegated, I would probably give it a 4 out of 5, but with pink, I'd probably give it a 3 out of 5. Would I get this plant? 1 out of 5. Actually, can I give zero? I think I gave somebody else zero already, did I? I would, sorry, I'll give it a zero. Because, just because it's an alocasia, I wouldn't even get this plant in non-variegated. Because I feel like I wouldn't be able to keep it alive. So why would I get a version that's already naturally challenged? So that I can see like $1,800 die within a couple of weeks in the corner of my room. No, zero out of 10 for me. But I understand why other people would want to get it. If you grow alocasia as well and you have success, I can understand why you would want to get this one. Next one, very similar, which is variegated black velvet. Okay, mm, I can get behind this one a little more. So despite all of the talking points previous, <laughs> I think the pink over here isn't so super pink. I do prefer the whitish parts more than the pink. But I think in combination with the velvet, this kind of looks nice. It does look a little bit sick, hey? So from an aesthetics, I prefer this over the other one actually because it has the velvet feature, which is something I really enjoy. So I'll probably give it a... I'd give it a 4 out of 5 for aesthetics actually because I do think it looks actually quite nice. One of the nicer looking alocasias, I'd say. But I would still give it a 0 out of 5 for wanting to get it. I'm... I'm I can't even keep the normal version alive, so I'm definitely not going to try a variegated version. Anthurium Circus Peanuts. Yeah, because I mean, if you look at this leaf, who doesn't instantly think of circus peanuts when you see this plant? Okay, so it's a hybrid between Dressery and Versicola, and it's from the 1970s or 1980s. It's called Anthurium Circus Peanuts, aka Mike's Goliath. I didn't realize that this weird name for Anthurium's thingy already started in the 70s or 80s. I would have just imagined they called it for what it is. It's a dressery crossed with a 
what was it, Versicolor. Why circus peanuts? Anyway, let's not get too caught up on this one. Um, I actually like it. Maybe that's why it's called circus peanuts, because it looks like peanut colored when it first comes out, I'm assuming. Look, it's far from ugly. I think it's quite nice. It also has a really nice sheen, but I don't think I like it quite as much as the first couple that we saw. Um, I'll probably still give it a four out of five for looks because it is a good looking plant, but I will probably give it a, you know, a, a two out of five. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get this plant just because I don't think it's that unique looking. If I would get the one with the red veining already, I would be happy with that. And then I think this one wouldn't really give me any extra. Philodendron Firebird. Never heard of that before. Oh, from the rare plant fairy. I met her uh, in Miami. I think this is a nice looking plant. Uh, well, I suppose um, giving plants weird names isn't unique to just anthuriums. We come up with weird names for philodendron as well. Um, mm, sorry, you guys ran out of battery, but we're back at it again. Um, ba -ba -ba, where was I? Philodendron firebird. I suppose it's a plant that you really buy for that newly emerging leaf, but it looks like those leaves fade really quickly to just looking very average. <laughs> so I got thrust on. <laughs> I would probably give it a three out of five for aesthetics because yes, these newly emerging leaves are nice, but I don't think the older leaves are nice. So it's probably a plant that you will at all times have like, I personally would have two or three leaves on because I would cut off the ugly ones. So, I would probably give it a one out of five for wanting to get it or for perceived ease of care. I feel like I might be able to get it to grow new leaves, but I don't think I would be able to actually keep many leaves alive and pristine um, at all times. So not really something I would add to my collection. I think there's nicer variegated philodendron that hold the variegation nicer. I think there's also nicer philodendron that have this color like orange marmalade, for example, over here we call it autumn queen. They also come out with these really bright orange leaves and then they fade, but they also grow much larger. So they suit my aesthetic a little bit better. So yeah. Next one, Alocasia Chantreri, pink. Wow, another pink Alocasia on here. Seems There seems to be like a general trend towards pink variegation um, and Alocasias for, I'm actually surprised how many Alocasias are on this wish list. But I mean, with the last SPG, inspired by SPG video as well, it came across really clearly that it seems to be just me suffering through these alocasias. People have great success with them. Definitely prefer that one over the, what was the other one? The Sanderiana. I probably prefer this over the Black Velvet as well. I actually like this. Again, I would actually prefer it to be white variegation instead of pink, but this pink isn't too pink, if you know what I mean. So I would probably give this a four out of five for aesthetics. And I would probably give it a one out of five for wanting to get it. I still wouldn't get it, but I would probably get it over the other two pink variegated um, alocasias. Alrighty, next up, Monstera Thai Constellation Miracle. Let's see what is so miracle. Oh, ooh. Okay, mm, I actually quite like this. What I like about this one is that the shape of the leaf is still fine, right? Like the amount of variegation or the mutation or whatever hasn't it turned it into something that just looks perpetually deformed, which I saw a lot of deformed monsteras um, in Miami, no offense. The leaf shape looks perfect, but you get this tree color effect. It's almost like you've got a normal Thai constellation, but then you have an Aurea mixed in there as well. I actually really, really like this one. I can get behind this one. Look down here, it suggests this one again to me. Don't you just think like this one actually has a nice leaf shape, nice leaf shape, nice leaf shape, nice leaf shape, nice, nice, meh. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I feel like this one is just, it, just looks unhealthy. This one looks healthy. 
Um, so I would give, I would probably give this a five out of five. I really like this, and yes, I would definitely get one at a reasonable price. Would it be like top of my wish list plants? Mm, actually. It could be, to be honest. I think it is really nice. I think I will add this to my wish list, but um, I'm sure it doesn't exist in Australia. Can we make this variant more readily available, please? Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, next one is Balloon Heart Variegata. They didn't give me a genus name, but when I Google it, it comes through looking like an alocasia. Another pink variegated alocasia. Oh, it seems to have a bit of velvet in it. Mmm, see, I like it more when it's white instead of pink. To be honest, it looks like, have a look at this one for example, where the leaf is more green, it looks like a normal leaf. Where the leaf has more variegation, it just looks deformed. It's kind of one of these plants, it's variegated. So if you love variegation for the sake of loving variegation, you'll be happy with this. But I personally feel like it's one of these kinds of variegation that's just really holding the plant back from looking nice, not making the plant look nice. So I've seen worse things, so I would probably give it a two. You know what, actually, no. I, I would give it a one out of five. Yeah, I feel like I'm really suspicious if there's like new plants being introduced and there's not a single like mature specimen of them. Like, how do you know it's even gonna mature? Is it gonna mature? Is it gonna look nice if it matures? Is this viable? Just purely based on this little Google search, I haven't seen a single one that looks nice. So I would give it one out of five for aesthetics and zero out of five for wanting to get this. No desire, sorry. It's an alocasia after all, come on. <laughs> right, next one, alocasia venom. Oh! <laughs> I feel bad, but I also just want to be honest. I was, when I was in Miami, uh, I walked around and I asked plant sellers, like, what's your favorite plant? And uh, one of them was like, alocasia venom. And then she showed me the plant and uh, it took all of my willpower to not tell her how ugly that plant is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my God. I know I'm gonna get hate for this one, but look, it's just my taste. And I'm pretty sure she should show me the most expensive one because she wanted to sell it, right? <laughs> She's been like, this is my opportunity to do, to get free marketing. I would literally not take this plant for free. If you would give this plant to me and say, hey, it's for free, can you please grow it? I would probably say no, like, <laughs> like I would not want it to take up my space and I know it will be like a, I know it will be a struggle to grow because it's an alocasia and I don't do alocasias well anyway. So it's nothing I would want to get um, because she had a really juvenile one and I was like, well, maybe, you know, the nice features aren't, haven't developed yet. By the way, this was also suggested by multiple people. Um, honestly guys, I do not understand the appeal at all. Like I prefer all the pink variegated ones over this one, even though I said before that I like white better. Also, isn't Venom black? Wouldn't this, this looks more like a ghostish kind of thing, not a, not a, Maybe, maybe, maybe my thinking is wrong. At least, however, I've seen some mature specimen over here. So at it's surely a viable plant that you can grow. I give it a one out of five because I saw a mature specimen on there and I know that at least it can mature. There's some sort of like method to the madness, you know what I mean? So if you like this sort of really oddball look, at least this is a viable plant you, and you can grow it nice, you know, or like nice, based on your taste, not mine. Um, each to their own tastes are different. So I would give it a one out of five for aesthetics and I would give it a zero out of five. Would definitely not get this plant, I'm sorry. Um, and last one, oh my God, another alloc alocasia cupria pink variegata. Okay, pink alocasia is coming through. Now, Cupria is my all-time favorite alocasia. I grow my one alocasia Cupria really well. I have two others that I don't grow that well. This is kind of nice. Am I just 
backpedaling on all of my comments on pink variegated alocasias, but I think I'm just very biased towards Cupria. This little bit of variegation, uh, it kind of just looks like a bird pooped on it. Like if I would want to get one, I would want, and I don't like the fully pink ones either. If I would get one, I would really want this sort of speckled look like this or like this half half. But I know with the half-half, it's often that the variegated half could also be very deformed and the other half is normal and so on. Um, let's just judge it by this photo because this is my favorite one out of them. If every leaf would look like this, I would actually give this a 4 out of 5. So yes, backpedaling hard on all the <laughs> pink variegated alocasia uh, opinions I had earlier. But you know, this is unfiltered. I'm just looking at these um, literally as we go. Like I didn't prepare for this video quite clearly. Um, would I get it? I'd say I'd give it a 3 out of 5 because I feel like my success with the normal alocasia cuprea is making me a little bit more conf confident in it. And I mean, at least this one over here is only 180 well, euros. At least it's not four digits, <laughs> you know? So I think I would actually get this. If, I, if it was right there and it was, let's say a hundred bucks, I would probably get it. But you know what, I would probably get it more so for the sake of making a video about it. I would love to grow this and record a video and record it over the course of 12 months and kind of see it. And I would appreciate never knowing what the next leaf is going to look like. I would probably not buy it because I know it's gonna be like a statement piece that's gonna help me decorate my apartment with, right? Like, I mean, all of these plants behind me, those are plants I get because I know I'll be able to grow them nicely and they'll make an impact uh, when it comes to decorating my house. I don't think this plant would have an impact on decorating my house, but it would make the collector in me kind of happy or the plant enthusiast in me really happy, um, kind of, you know, being excited about each new leaf. I did not feel that excitement about the other alocasias that were in that list previously especially not the venom <laughs> sorry the venom was my least favorite out of all of them today Alrighty, that was just the first 20 I think we can stop it over here there's plenty more suggestions a few of them are double ups but if you enjoy this concept there's definitely potential for part two three four five and so on I actually really enjoyed this uh, concept I'm not really hunting plants at the moment myself in real life but I don't mind kind of seeing what's out there and seeing what's trendy and seeing what um, uh, people are chasing seeing what sparks people's interest um, um, it's actually quite interesting to see and with some I very much agree with some I very much disagree But I think bottom line is people really enjoy pink variegated alocasias Surprise surprise people really enjoy anthuriums and people of course as always enjoy variegation in general So I'm not super surprised to be honest um, But yeah, there was a lot there was lots of them. I've never really heard of before. So it was a nice little exercise for me I feel like I learned some something new or like I was exposed to something new. So yeah, I would love to do another part. Please also leave a comment letting me know which one out of these 20s would make it onto your wish list. Or if none of these tickle your fancy, let me know what's currently on your wish list. Or let me know what is the trend that you have observed, whether you agree with it or disagree. I really just want everybody to enjoy this hobby and if it takes buying a thousand dollar pink variegated alocasia for you to enjoy this hobby, then do it. Please do it. If it makes you happy, please do it. But at the same time, I think it's also really important to address the fact that you don't need to chase the rarest plants or the fanciest plants or the newest plants or the, you know, never seen before plant to enjoy this hobby. You can also enjoy this hobby growing a pothos over a Monstera aurea. At the end of the day, we're all individual and we decide what success means to us. But I think it's really nice to see how varied our tastes are. Thank you so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you next time around.